We're joined now in the studio by Peter Abang, who's a member of the Lawyers in Defense of Democracy group, and uh, from Port Harcourt by uh, a retired uh, captain, Wakwa Sunday, member of the uh, Rivers State Elders and Leaders Forum. Uh, good to see you uh, both, uh, gentlemen, and thanks for your time. Uh, let's uh, start off uh, from Port Harcourt, uh, where we have uh, Mr. Wakwa to give us a sense of what what uh, the elders, uh, you just heard the breaking story now that uh, there seemed to be a truce uh, brokered by President Tinubu uh, amongst uh, parties. Uh, let us in on what this would mean uh, for concerned elders uh, in your state. Uh, it's a welcome development. The position of the elders uh, is to maintain peace in river state. And uh, that is why we are appealing uh, to each of the fashion to tolerate and accommodate uh, one another. You know, you cannot uh, set river state on fire because of uh, political benefit. Yes, it's all about having control of political benefit. So we are happy that the president is intervening. know uh, from you as a member of the elders uh, group there in River State. But let's bring it to our guest here, who is a lawyer, uh, Peter Bang. Uh, I'm sure you have thoughts on uh, this latest development and uh, some 18-point uh, agreement reached by the warring parties. How realistic do you think this uh, deal is? Will it even last? And what does it mean for the 27 uh, members of well, the, they used to be PDP, defected to the APC. What does it mean for all that's uh, played out so far? Well, first of all, thank you for having me. Now, to start with, it is a welcome development mm. that the, our president, His Excellency, President um, Bolami Tinubu, is, um, is intervening and um, trying to find a lasting solution to this political crisis that has bedeviled the river state. But of course, the question is, mm. how sustainable are these um, far-reaching, should I call them far-reaching resolution? Right. Secondly, there are so many issues that we should, that, that needs to be considered. First is the fact that will the former speaker return as the speaker, that is one thing that should be considered. Secondly, will um, the current speaker, a he, be asked to relinquish his office as the new speaker? These are issues that need to be considered in order to, in order to, fa to factor whether or not the far-reaching uh, resolution will be sustainable. Because this is not something that we say is just uh, going to last within 24 hours. It is going to take the lifespan of this government, which is four years. Again, we need to also ask, will the seat of the governor be affected? So there, are, there is a lot, there is a lot that meets the eye with respect to whatever um, intervention His Excellency may have proffered. There is a lot, because the, the state is boiling day by day. Whether they agree to those terms is a different ballgame entirely. Okay, let's bring in uh, uh, retired Captain uh, Wang on Sunday. You, you've had uh, Peter Arbang. Uh, surely for elders like yourself uh, as well as the president and other political watchers who have sat uh, in uh, the presidential villa to broker this peace they may have also looked at some of the dynamics Peter Abeng has just reeled out let us in if you will what you think uh, this uh, piece because this is the second time the president is weighing in on this and uh, the question will be uh, how optimistic are you this time Yeah, um, what we are saying is uh, the president should consolidate. He should consolidate on the peace uh, measure uh, between the two fashion. I don't see anything too 
more for any of them to sacrifice. Uh, once they can be able to accommodate each other, I think uh, the state will have the peace we, we are looking for. You know, so I'm not uh, a lawyer to talk about the people that defected and people that not defected. But all I'm saying today as a, a member of the leading uh, uh, River State uh, elders is please let peace reign. And I believe if the president intervened, for sure there must be peace. Uh, Peter Bang, I mean, you are the lawyer here. Maybe you want to help us understand uh, the legal implications uh, if there are any or constitutional uh, grounds for some of the decisions uh, reached so far. Let me help you with one or two of the resolutions reached. Well, it says in uh, item three, uh, the leadership of River State House of Assembly as led by Right Honorable uh, Martin Amewule shall be recognized alongside the 27 members who resigned uh, from the PDP. And uh, the governor of River State, uh, Sir Fubara, uh, shall represent uh, the state budget to a properly constituted River State House of Assembly, and on and on. Uh, these two points, help us understand the legal uh, backing for it. Thank you. Now, if you look at the provisions of Section 109 of the Constitution, that provision is clear without equivocation. It's, it states instances where a member will be said to have ceased to become a member of a House of Assembly. And one of such is where he defects from the political party that sponsors him and joins another po political party with a proviso, mm. with a proviso that that defection shall not affect his seats if and only if there is a division in the political party that sponsors them. Now the question now is, mm. is there any division within the PDP? The answer is no. So by virtue of section 109 of the constitution, the moment a, pa a person defects from a, the political party that sponsors him to another political party, automatically he seizes to become a member of the House of Assembly. That is, I believe, that is what informed the Speaker of the River State House of Assembly to have declared the seat of this former, because from the moment you defect mm. and there is a representation in that regard, your seat automatically becomes vacant. But so, in the name of keeping or maintaining some level of peace or restoring peace in River State and resolving these issues, is it possible to circumvent somewhat, uh, you know, uh, these constitutional uh, provisions? Well, the Constitution is clear. We cannot, because we are fighting for peace, quote and unquote, violate the provisions of the constitution that point is very very fundamental except you're saying that the constitution should be amended just for the purpose of ensuring that there is peace in river states and in this sense in this instance i don't think the speaker that is um edison a he is wrong to have declared those seats vacant. He is not wrong. He is acting in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. Mm. So, what we should be talking about here and now is not a question of whether these people should be returned back as members. No. The, the, the next line of action should be that INEC, in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution, should set up in another election, a by-election, to fill in those vacant seats. Nothing more, nothing less. This is in accordance with the provisions of the Constitution. Well, I think uh, if, you, if you look at it, uh, let's bring in one call, because most of the uh, resolutions reached here in the communique would uh, 
need some legal minds. But again, let's bring in uh, the elders uh, whom you also speak on their behalf. Uh, quite a number of issues here uh, to represent the budget, and I've gained the names of those commissioners who resigned uh, to be represented before the State Assembly. And uh, it's a, a sort of speaking, going back the way it's uh, always been since after the inauguration of May 29. How feasible can that be uh, in the face of uh, uh, p seeking peace in River State? Yeah, um, if I should understand, though I have not been privy to the resolution, but uh, I think with what you are saying, it's like going back to Sato Kwa, but then what protection does the uh, governor have? You know, so I, I don't know if the governor was part of the resolution they took. So if we should go back to Sato Kwa, we should be also saying, what protection does the governor have? I think that's not enough I can sign. Well, it, it, just to help you make sense of that, that's why we said uh, we're going to give you more details in the course mm -hmm. of the bulletin. Yes, the governor was part of that uh, uh, meeting uh, with the president uh, as well as other party members uh, in this. Uh, but again, uh, quickly here, uh, you know, the, the last in that communique says that there should not be a caretaker committee for the local governments in River State. The dissolution of the uh, local government administration is null and void and shall not be recognized. Uh, you can see that all uh, on your screen. Uh, mm -hmm. The first there and the third. Uh, uh, it, it, there are eight listed there which ultimately would need uh, someone like uh, Peter here and other legal minds uh, to delve into. So let me bring in Peter quickly here. Peter, uh, going back to status quo, uh, going back to where, the way it's always been since May 29, uh, how feasible can that be? Can Does that also, as Ungozi asked, because you, you, perhaps maybe you missed that, would that mean that those who left the uh, PDP for the APC mm -hmm. will also go back to being members of the PDP? Peter? <laughs> it's more or less saying, giving somebody their rights to approbate and reprobate which the law frowns at, you have defected, period. The Constitution says, if there is no division within your party, and you willingly defect to another political party, your seats automatically should be declared vacant. Mm. So, the idea of whether um, these parties, uh, these, these former members, because in the eyes of the law, they are no longer members of the River State House of Assembly. So the idea of whether they want to, um, uh, the resolution is saying, um, for instance, like the first resolution that, 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 that I, I, I read that said uh, all matters and courts shall be withdrawn immediately. It does not lie within the resolution to have these matters withdrawn. Because the question, again, that we need to ask is, are these parties to the suit also parties to this resolution that was reached? That is one fundamental question that we need to ask. Again, we need to understand this, that in dealing, I am sorry to say this, but mm. I have to say it with respect, in dealing with politicians over the years, we have seen it that it is better to dine with them with a very long spoon. So, who is guaranteeing that this resolution will be respected across board? Nobody. Mm. Nobody has come since the, uh, the release of this resolution to the public. Nobody has come out and say, oh yes, we are fine by this resolution. Right. Uh, well, uh, that one quote did ask a question there. Is the governor protected? Not just physical protection, but how does this resolution uh, ensure that there will be no move, any attempts in the near future to, you know, maybe <laughs> impeach uh, the governor? Uh, very quickly, I want to respond to that, but I'd like um, uh, Elder Wankwo to respond to it. And while you think of that, how best do you think the Rivers Elders 
I mean, you're one of them. How best do you think this really should be resolved? Is it a political solution? As the president has intervened, we, we heard from Fashola, uh, former minister for works and housing, say that, look, the president has no constitutional powers uh, to actually intervene in not just the matter of River State, but also that of uh, Ondo State. Erdan Wankwa, you want to respond to this? Yes, actually we were not invited and uh, we are not party to that resolution. So I think our forum, we have to maybe seek uh, uh, the opinion of those who participated and uh, we take position. Mm. Okay, but ideally, how would you want it to be resolved? Um, well, I can't speak for the forum. So I think the best we can do is uh, we are going to sit again and uh, deliberate on it and uh, we take position. Enough. Peter Abang, you want to respond to this? I, I agree completely with um, uh, the former Minister of Works, Fashal ICN. It is not even within the powers of the President to come out to say he wants to intervene in matters that concerns the states. It is not within his constitutional powers. And the only way, if there is an impasse, the only way such issues can be resolved is through the instrumentality of the courts. Mind you, the River State House of Assembly, as presently constituted, as well as the Speaker, of the River State House of Assembly, Edison Ehe, had instituted an action at the River State High Court, which is presently being presided over before the Honorable Justice M. W. Danagogo. So, with respect, even though the, the, the position is that where uh, parties have submitted to the jurisdiction of the courts, persons or third parties are refrained from making comments However, we just need to make this point clear. You have submitted to the jurisdiction of a competent court of law. The next thing is, let the courts determine the substance of the case, one way or the other. It's just that um, um, I, I think politicians are, 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 are taking the third arm of the government for granted, I mean the judiciary. With respect to them, I know there are good politicians out there, but I must state this categorically. Politicians are becoming the neck, the problem that is choking development in Nigeria. They are becoming a problem. This is a pain that we must confront head on if Nigeria must grow. And in line with President Tinubu's uh, um, renewed hope agenda, let it start with the reformation and setting a clean standard for the judiciary. By the time we get it right, one, with respect to financial independence of the judiciary and an overall independence of the judiciary, then we are a step in the right direction. Yeah. Because <coughs> day by day, like the allegations that was made, that is a, a former governor of the state instigated an action. Right. Whether we like it or yes, it is allegedly okay. said. We'll have to leave it there. Peter Abang is the lawyer. Thank you very much for joining us. One quote Sunday is a retired captain and member of Rivers Elders. Thank you both of you for joining us on Newsnight tonight.